What's up, everybody? How we doing? And welcome to another installment of Riverfront U. Our, I guess, Travis, we call this like it's not annual anymore. Is it like multi annual? Is that what we call these interviews now? I guess it is. It's fun, man. Yeah. I love seeing you. Me too, man. It's always good to see you. So I'm Tim Daniel, joined as always by Jack Mueller, our River, our Riverfront U Miami, Ohio beat writer. Jack had to be here because he's the only one that actually had the opportunity to go see the team this year. Um, and then, of course, head coach of the Miami Red Hawks, Travis Steele, going into his third year. And man, always fun to catch up with you as always, but a lot, a lot going on in the uh, Miami Red Hawk program right now between. We're going to get to some of the kids coming in, obviously, like looking forward, but we'll start with... Uh, Year two, obviously, the progress was really impressive. Um, I thought you could really see where you guys jumped from year one as far as, like, not just win totals, but competitiveness, talent was really kind of the jump. And that's not a knock on anyone you had your first year by any means. But seeing the growth of what you're building there and kind of taking those baby steps. Like, Jack and I would text for the year, and I was like, I think they have a shot of putting a run together, winning the MAC, And, you know, but like, maybe a couple more scores like you have now. And we're probably having that conversation. So for you coming out of year two, how are you looking at things with the program? Yeah. You know, I'm, you're, you're, we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we were either. You know um, I think, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we showed a lot of growth this past year. Um, I really like where our culture is. Um, and I really, really like th that our talent got a lot better. I thought from year one to year two, Um and we played a lot of young guys last year, man. We played four freshmen, I would say, significant roles, um, you know, 20 plus minutes, a, you know, around 20 minutes a game. Um, and and those guys got better, man. You kind of throw them to the fire. It's kind of sink or swim. Uh, and they looked like freshmen at times. And But we had some great wins. You know, we beat Vermont. Like it was awesome. NCAA tournament. We beat Akron uh, at our place. It was obviously an NCAA tournament as well. And so, you know, we had some good moments, inconsistent at times, and I think that happens when you're a little bit young. Um, but I did like the growth that we showed um, this past year, and um, it's kind of springboarded us. You know, it's like I, I challenged the guys that were coming back, like, can we use this as a springboard to, to continue to move us forward, right? And Because we do have, you know, several guys coming back from last year's team, and continuity and retention is probably more important than ever in the landscape that we're in. Um you know, but I, I do like the direction that we're heading, uh, but we're not where we want to be, though, Tim uh, and, and Jack. Like we want to we want to win the championship. We want to compete. We want to play an NCAA tournament and advance in it. And, and that is the absolute goal. Yeah, Coach, um, the biggest thing I noticed in, over the last couple of years is there seems to be a new identity of your team. There seems to be a style of play set up, which has been absent for Miami basketball in the past. How can you see that growing going into the next year? Yeah, you know, Jack, our, our goal is to be the most connected team in the MAC. And I think connection's got to be on both ends of the floor, defensively and offensively. And I think our, we're going to try to play really, really fast. And then we really want to share the basketball. We're, we're a ball movement, player movement team, connected on the offensive end. And then I think that makes us really connected on the defensive end. You know, it's a team defense. Um, and uh, so I like where we're evolving. I thought we showed growth in that area uh, last year from year one, and hopefully we'll continue to even show even more growth in that year going into year three. Um, I think, you know, we recruit to it, Jack. I think it helps us, especially in this portal. You know, the portal, the, the landscape is so, it's so different than it's ever been, right? I mean, uh, it's almost unrecognizable, honestly, working in this business right now than it was three years ago. And so we have to adjust and, and, and the recruitments in the portal are so fast and so quick. And what we want to stay away from is just grabbing talent. I don't think that works. So I think we have our huge checklist of kind of the fit. Obviously, talent is a part of the equation, but it's not the equation. You know, like the fit piece is really important and it gives us something to recruit to. You know, we look for very specific things and, and hopefully we already have connection points uh, with those young men um, previous to them hopping into the portal. Uh, so that we kind of know what we're getting. But I, I, I'm i pleased with where we're heading, um, but we want to continue, obviously, to become more efficient, specifically on that offensive end. I thought our defensive end, we were ranked number two in the league last year, or number three in the league, um, and that was with Big Anderson Morambo. And Andy's a great offensive player, um, struggled sometimes on that defensive end. So I think we'll continue to show growth and hopefully be the number one ranked defensive team in the league this upcoming year. Trav, you talked about just kind of the continuity uh, that you guys have built. And obviously, 
with kind of having success and progress and things like that. There's changes in coaching staff as well. So Rob moves on, Rob goes to Missouri. Yeah. And now you kind of have those shoes to fill. For you kind of just keeping like the main thing, the main thing, how, how much of that is like, how much of that do you feel is just the progress of your program of like, yeah, we lose this guy, but we're just fine because we have another one coming in who can maybe not be the same personality, but kind of still fill those shoes that we need them to fill. Yeah, you know, the, the great thing for us, Tim, is I, I was fortunate, you know, I was able to get Carl Richburg here. He's a local guy, went to Mason High School, played at Miami as well, but he was at Marquette with Shaka, and, and he came here and took a pay cut to come back to his, his alma mater. And, you know, I knew Carl when he used to work my camps at Xavier, um, and, uh, you know, before he got into the business, and and uh, so we've always had a relationship. Well, you know, I'm just, it's easy for me, like Rob – really happy that he was able to, uh, to, to land that Missouri job. Well, it's easy for me to be able to just bump up Carl Richburg, right? Carl's more than ready. He's been an assistant at the D one level already and he loves this place, man. Um, and he's, and I trust him. So it just makes it, especially when your program's heading in the right direction, it makes it really easy to promote from within, uh, you know, um, and not that his strengths are going to be a little bit different than, than Rob Summers in, 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 to your point, like as the leader and the CEO of the program, I got to recognize that. And then I got to make up for that. Those, those areas in a different way. Right. And, and uh, my attention may have to go to a little bit of a different area than it was before. So, um, but it's, it's, you know, but player wise, it's important too. So we've been able to keep Jonathan Holmes, which is great. Um, he, he's ready to be a head coach yesterday, to be honest with you. I mean, he's phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, Christian Smith's been terrific. We've been able to have him going to be going to year three here, here at, uh, at Miami. Uh, Carl's been here the whole time, and then uh, Elijah Pennington as well. So we 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 don't have a lot of co- a lot of continuity staff wise, and then player wise, we're able to keep all those freshmen that we played. Um, you know, it's a uh, that was huge. We didn't have to re recruit them. We just they 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 love it here. They love Miami. They love our culture. They love the development, the vision that we have for the program, um, and uh, which is going to be really going to serve us really well here in year three and moving forward. Yeah. Go ahead, Dick. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, Coach, you mentioned promoting from within. Um, obviously, some veteran leaders have moved on from the program in Dorwishi and Bryce. Um, who do you expect to promote from within to kind of take on those leadership roles and yeah. keep that trend going? Well, that's a great that's a great question. You know, I, it was funny last year, Jack. You know, I didn't know who our leaders really were until, until you don't. Guys can be voted captains, but until you kind of go through a moment where there's some adversity or in the game, um, I'll never forget Evan Epsaro. It was against uh, Coppin State. Uh, man, he kind of like grabbed a couple guys, you know, by their jerseys and huddled them up on the floor. And I was like, man, I haven't seen that. That's the first time I'd seen like some passion and some fire and some some like verbal leadership, not just by example. And I thought Bryce and Darwishi did a great job of leading by example. Um, not They weren't the loudest guys in the room, you know. Um, but it was good. Like Evan sh- showcased, I think he has that ability. And and Ian Elmer was another young man that I thought as a freshman showcased that at times as well, which is going to be really serve us really well moving forward because they're younger guys. Um, and uh, but I would expect those guys to continue to take on leadership roles with our team. Um, you know, obviously we're bringing in some veterans through the portal because we had to get a little bit older and balance some of the youth that we have. And we're trying to make sure that we get a little bit of that out of, out of those guys as well. Um, I think a guy like Peter Suter, who's coming in from Bellarmine, who's really well coached down there by Coach Davenport, um, I think he'll bring some good leadership qualities as well. Um, and so does Antoine Wolfolk from Rutgers. So can we can we get to that? Are we allowed? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, they've signed. So okay, yeah, perfect. We're allowed in wise. So yeah. obviously, first name I'm going to bring up just from my experience with you and my experience of working as Cam Craft. Um, I think this is a perfect fit for him. Honestly, I think that your team, obviously you recruited him out of high school in your previous stop. Um, obviously with everything that kind of happened, his previous stop, which just probably wasn't the best fit anymore. And that happens a lot. Yep. And, but his upside and his talent level, which you got to see glimpses of his freshman year before he registered his sophomore year. But I mean, his, his upside level is leads to Mac and scoring and has that talent level and that, you know, that basketball intelligence. So for you kind of have this full circle moment where you do get to coach him after recruiting him. How's, how, how cool has that been? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love Cam. I love Cam. I, I, I've known him for obviously a long time. 
Um, didn't work out for him, Xavier. And that doesn't mean, listen, that he's a bad guy or that right. it just, it's just bad fit for whatever. It didn't work out. Just didn't work out. Um, he, uh, he's a great young man. Uh, when he entered the portal, I went and picked him up that day and said, Hey, listen, let's go grab a bite to eat. And he, he thought I was just calling him. I said, no, I'm going to be there in, in, in 20 minutes. And, uh, he goes, what? I said, yeah, I said, I'll, I'll pick you up. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, and then we kind of talked, you know, I, I wanted to kind of pick his brain on what he was looking for, uh, in his next, you know, situation. And, you know, I think he, uh, he was looking for somebody that knew him, that trust factor, that relationship. Um, you know, I care a lot about him, uh, not only as a player, but just as a person, he's a great young man, but I, I think he will absolutely thrive here. I mean, I'm going to let him loose. He can really score. Yeah. I mean, he can really, really, really score. He's got a gift. Uh, he can score at all three levels, rim, mid-range, threes. He's efficient. He's not just a, a volume score, um, which I think there's a lot of scores that are that way. And those guys are, that are inefficient usually don't lead to winning. Uh, there's, I always say there's a, there's a leading score on every losing team. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just – it is what it is. But he's efficient. Um, and I, I think, you know – he he's he's become much better defensively. I think he's 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 had to, you know, being in, being there with, with Sean Miller. I think he's he's learned the importance of defense at the Division One level, um, you know. So I think he'll make an absolute monster impact for us. Um, I could see him being one of the top scorers, obviously, in our league, and and uh, he's going to be in that role. That's what I told him. I said, dude, we need you, we need you to be that guy scoring wise, and he can absolutely do it. Coach, I want to talk about the other player that just committed in the portal, uh, Peter Suter from Bellarmine. Yeah. Uh, excellent freshman season at uh, Bellarmine, all, a son freshman. Um, how do you see him fitting into your offense and your system? Yeah, Peter. So it's interesting because I went into the portal. I said, listen, we got to get a bucket getter, um, which we got in Cam. Uh, I wanted a Swiss Army knife, which is Peter. And then I wanted an enforcer, which is Antoine Wolfolk. And, um, you know, Peter – Obviously, I'm from the Indianapolis area, so I've known Peter. I've seen him a lot over the years. We played against him when he was a freshman at Bellarmine. We actually keep on reminding we beat him down there. Um, and uh, but I love this game, man. On film, it was like, man, he just popped. I, I always kind of said, man, I wish I would have had the opportunity to recruit him because he's a Miami guy, and he's that guy that we had when I was I went to college at Butler, and when Butler was back then was in the MCC, which is now the Horizon League. And we had Brandon Miller, Darnell Archie, Laval Jordan, you know, Joel Cornett, all those guys, man. Peter reminds me of those guys. Tough, toughest guy on the floor. Toughest guy on the floor. Plays extremely hard, is extremely smart. Like he, like Bellarmine almost played him at the point. And they basically did last year and he's 6'5". And uh, he can really pass and handle. He's got to continue to get better with his shooting, which he will. I, I don't worry. It's, it's a lot like we had Colby Jones and Najee Marshall, Xavier. Those, those guys were really versatile ball handlers and playmakers. I think Peter can be a lot of the same. So he's just – he's a tremendous defender too. I mean, like he's an elite defender. Like awesome on the ball, off the ball. I mean, just physical, tough. Really excited what he's going to be able to bring to our team. And he, like I said earlier, he's been really well coached at Bellarmine uh, for two years with with uh, with Scotty Davenport. Have a ton of respect for their program and, and everything that they're about. So he'll make a huge impact on our team. Yeah, and I think um, kind of talking about what you have currently to go with those guys. Obviously, you mentioned um, Ian Elmer, who obviously had like a nice jump for his freshman year. Just kind of having those growths, those guys. You see it from your all the time with your one, year two. You had a quite bit of that, obviously, at Xavier um, with guys like Najee Marshall, with guys like Colby Jones. What do you kind of see from guys like him and like Ryan Mabry? And like, what have you seen from them in the offseason that's kind of got you like feeling really good about what they bring for year two? Yeah, it's, uh, I would tell you the guy who I think's had the best spring uh, in our program is, is Reese Potter. Um, Re Re Reese. He had a good freshman year. He had some good moments. Um, he uh, he was injured the whole preseason. <laughs> he didn't practice October, November, and then I just threw him in there in, in a game. You know, it's like – and people probably don't understand. I think fans don't understand how hard that is for anybody, especially for a freshman, <laughs> right? Right? Like, it, it's hard. It's like 
it, it's really difficult. And I, he had some great moments. I think he is going to absolutely explode this year. Um, he's picked, he's put on 17 pounds already this, this spring. Um, he can shoot it. He can drive it. He can post it. He, he's mobile. I mean, I, I, I he, he is going, I think he will have a massive leap going into his sophomore year. Just love his motive, how motivated he's been and his, his focus. He, he's been tremendous. Um, Ian Omer, we talked about, listen, he, he, he probably improved from on our team more from last June to the end of the season than anybody. I mean, if you would have seen his June, first June workout, Tim and Jack, you guys have been like, Oh my God, can he play at all? Um, and, and then to the point where we started starting him during the mid season and then he never relinquished that position. I mean, he, uh, impacts winning both ends, extreme athlete jumps, sh can shoot it. I mean, like defends rebounds. He does everything. I love what he, he, he's, he has continued to get better. Makai Cooper, you know, started almost the whole season as a freshman as well. Just a lot like Ian, like he just two way player can, can be the, in my opinion, the best defensive player in the league. Um, he's got speed, you know, he's got, he, he's made a huge jump with this jump, just the confidence in his jump shot and his finishing for him and up sorrow around the rim had to improve because they're smaller guards, you know, like, you know, Makai's six foot, <laughs> he's not six, five and, and Evan up is five, 10 on a good day, you know, like, but those two little guys, man, they're so freaking tough and competitive and they know how to play. And I mean, I, I, we've had a really good, really good spring with those, those freshmen Jackson Kentucky was a young man, didn't play as much last year, but he's had a great spring six, nine, two thirty. I mean, like I, He's skilled and mobile. And, and then the kid that didn't even play last year, you know, is Brent Byers because he redshirted when he came at semester. He was a really a class of 2024 kid. He came at almost like football does a semester early to get started. And uh, man, he's got he's gonna be really good. Really, really good. Six, seven, six, eight. So we have we've had a great spring of development, and that's what we want to be known for here is just showing that growth. You know, just as a person, as a player, as a student, you know, being committed to those guys every single day. And because uh, we have the talent, it, it's just about getting those guys better. Yeah. So freshman wise, obviously what you guys have coming in, kind of just kind of keep building up. Uh, kind of talk a little about some of the freshmen you guys have signed in, just what to what Miami fans can really expect from these guys coming to the program this year. Yeah. So we uh, so like I mentioned earlier, Brent Byers came a semester early to red shirt. Um, his second part of the year last year. And um, I think he's a guy that can shoot it uh, really, really stretch the floor. He's six, seven, six, eight. He's long. He's, he's versatile. He's competitive. He's tough. He's a prick on the floor, he, borderline dirty at times, which I love. Um, he's just that guy you want on your team. <laughs> um, I think he's, he's really grown his game off the dribble, but I'd say Currently, he's probably at his best crash in the glass, shooting threes and def defensively. He's really good. Um, and then we got Luke Skaljack, who's coming in from Brexville, uh, out, out by uh, the Akron area, Northeast Ohio. Um, Luke got recruited by everybody in our league, offered by everybody, and honestly had some higher level offers as well. Like if you look at the league, Atlantic 10s, and um, I think he's the best player in the state of Ohio. Listen, I've seen all these kids in the 2024 class. He's the best guy. Um, if I had to pick one guy, I'm picking him. He's a, he could play the one. He's a scoring point guard. He could score it. He can pass it. He's got a ton of swagger. Tim, you'll love this. He has the belief of a guy like, when I think of like a guy that we had at Xavier, JP Makura, <laughs> like he's got that type of swagger to him. Love it. And belief. And he thinks he's the best player on the floor, regardless of who's out there. You can put LeBron James out there, and he's going to think he's better than LeBron James. Um, but that's what makes him great. He is confident, man. He is super, super confident, and he's got a lot of skill. He's got a lot of wiggle. He can really create his own shot, uh, which we needed. Uh, a couple guys that could do that in the shot clock. Um, so I, I would anticipate him and Brant having big impacts on our team. Nice. Coach, um, you've mentioned a lot of guys, and it sounds like the team's going to be very talented next year. Do you foresee any issues getting guys the opportunities that they want and balancing minutes? No, you know, I think we got the right guys, Jack. I think I think that's understanding. We try to undersell and over deliver. We don't promise minutes. We don't promise starting spots. Um, we t we want guys that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And 
you know, like I'm comfortable playing nine guys. We're going to play really fast, really, really, really fast. And we are going to pick up a ton defensively full court. So like, I think, you know, that, that allows you to play nine. I think obviously you're allowed 13 scholarship guys, but it's hard to keep 13 guys happy. <laughs> so what it's going to create is a very competitive environment. And I do think we have very, very, very good character in our locker room. And uh, like I said, we got to do, I tell them everybody, I got to do what's best for the team. I'm going to play nine guys and you're either in the rotation or you're not. I'll let you know before the game. So you don't, you're not surprised or, oh man, I, cause you didn't tell me I wasn't going to put, no, I, this is exactly where you're slotted. Um, I just think having those transparent conversations with, with young men, it helps, but it's not easy. Everybody wants to play to your point. And right now, we have uh, we have uh, we have eleven guys on scholarship because I put Eli Yofan on scholarship, um, who was a walk on for us. Um, I put him on scholarship, so you can't keep everybody happy. Thirteen scholarships is too many, in my opinion, and especially in this landscape. Yeah, absolutely. But, but you got to have enough in order in case you get injuries, right, and be able to practice. So, <laughs> got to have enough. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, looking around the Mac, so obviously, you know, bringing the guys you're bringing in. Um, I just listened to Sean, finally enough, talk about this the other day about no one wants to play the Mac team in the NCAA tournament. Nobody wants that matchup. And Toledo, obviously, losing guys like Dante Maddox, Xavier is going to be yeah. a big thing. Akron, obviously, what they've done year in, year out with uh, obviously, you have pretty personal ties to that, you could say. Yeah. Um, when you kind of look league wide now with where you guys are, with what you're building. Where's kind of like your excitement level as far as like that level of competition as you guys continue to improve your program? Yeah, I, I think the league will be a lot better next year. I think uh, it's hard to predict it a little bit, Tim, just because of the portal. It's not all done yet. So everybody's still kind of working on their rosters. But I will tell you, um, I, I feel like our league has done better in the portal this year than it did last spring. And I think, listen, we all know UMass is coming in the league. So everybody better be up in their game a little bit, budget-wise, NIL collective-wise, everything, if we want to compete. Just in, and I think every, I think everybody knows that. So yeah. I think you're seeing more of a commitment level from an administration across the board in our league, um, probably due to everybody forecasting UMass. Because I know what UMass has got collective-wise, and I know what they got budget-wise, and it's different than every other team in our league by a mile. And, and which again is isn't a bad thing. I'm not complaining about that because that's going to pull people. Sure. You know, it's going to rise people up, which is good for our league. And then if you don't, there's it's really going to be very clear who the pretenders and the contenders are. It is going to be as I mean, it'll be crystal clear. And uh, so I do think you know you have listen that Akron's been really good. Obviously, they won the conference tournament last year. They were pretty fortunate there at the end of that game uh, against Kent State, uh, but. They, they, they've had a lot of continuity. Well, now he's lost a lot of guys, and but they did really well in the portal. I mean, they've got, they, they, they did really well. John's done really well there. So I'd expect them to continue to be really good. They're very committed to winning at Akron, very committed um, from an administration standpoint. Um, Toledo, same thing. You know, it's funny. They just, they took two of the guys out, out of our league, you know, like they just, you know, that were good players. Um, Todd Kowalczyk does a great job. He's a tremendous coach. He's been there for a long time. And he's won to, it, what he's done. And I think, you know, people are going to say, well, hey, he hasn't been to the NCAA tournament at Toledo to win four regular season championships. I don't care what in this league, in this league, that is unbelievable. I mean, it's incredible. That's hard. See, people don't realize winning the regular season title is a lot harder than winning the conference tournament. <laughs> I mean, that is a marathon. I mean, I, I he's going to continue to do great. Kent State, Rob Senderoff does a great job. They're going to continue to be good. Bowles over at Ohio, I mean, they got some guys back. They did a good job in the portal as well. Like, they're going to be good. I mean, like Bowling Green, I think Todd Simon's doing a great job there. I mean, they're, they're killing the portal. Ball State killed the portal this year. They got Peyton Sparks back. Um, right from from the Big Ten, and we saw we know how good he was in our league the year before. He's a freaking monster. Um, I got Joey Hart coming in for Kentucky. So I mean, it's like our league is doing well portal wise. So I would think that our league will will elevate this year 
And then the following year, we add UMass. And I think you will continue to see it elevate. I think it'll become an, become an arms race if you want to compete. And if you don't want to compete, then, like I said, it'll be very, very crystal clear who the pretenders and contenders will be. Yeah, I know. I'm, uh, I know if you guys are definitely looking forward to that. Jack, you want to touch anything before we get to the promotional stuff we got to yeah, promise? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about um, from the beginning of the season towards the end of the season, I think there was a big change in the amount of support from the student body and the crap and the fan yeah. base as a whole. Uh, can you touch on that and like what that adds to the program when you have a committed fan base behind you? Listen, it's huge. And uh, listen, I, I, I t it's funny. A um, couple of the young, young men here, the students here, uh, I, I meet, I meet with quite frequently and I, I, it just takes one person. It just takes one person. And I, and I'm a firm believer in that to, to change a culture and change a direction. And, and, and I, and what I tried to really impress upon them was, is like they could leave a legacy and they could be a part of that change. And they have been, and I, and I listen, makes a huge difference, massive difference. I, um, I'll never forget the first game that I coached here. And, and I was kind of like taken aback. I was like, Oh my God, uh, there ain't nobody here. <laughs> um, you could hear, a, you could hear a pin drop, uh, in, at, in Millette. Um, it's gotten way better. Like I said, it's not where we want to be, but it's also not where we were. Um, I thought it got a lot better as the year wore on. We got to continue because our biggest population in Oxford is our student population, right? So like we got to get students to the game and they got to be the heartbeat of the arena, of our program, um, make it the hardest place to play in the Mac. Um, and I got to do a better job, Jack, of getting out there even more. I have to start. I, and I told, we, we have the team to do it. Like, listen, we're going to be good. <laughs> so I'm, we're going to be good. So I think we'll have a great product to put out there on the floor and, 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 but I, I have to do a good job. And so do our, all of us, we got to lock of hands and, and all work together and pull in the same direction because, man, I want it to be fun for the students, right? It should be a party <laughs> for the students right. essentially there. And it should be an experience that they take away with them for the rest of their lives. They remember, you know, Hey, remember that game when we played, you know, whoever at home, right state on that Friday, November 8th, like, man, you remember that game? It was so much fun. You know, th those are moments you get for the rest of your life. And, but it has a huge impact on our program. We're just so appreciative of our student body and, and the couple guys, Adam, Adam and Pat, I, again, they, they know who they are. Like, listen, those are my guys. They, uh, they've done a great job. They've been day one guys. So just extremely appreciative. Yeah. I think that Vermont game from this past year might be the first of that that line that game was incredible i watched it at home and i'm texting yeah. jack who's at the game i'm like this is insane yeah. so we need, awesome. to do that. we need to do that more often tim more, more game winners make it more exciting right <laughs> yeah i agree i mean look at look at the knicks right now i mean they just yeah. get every call in their favor but you know that's neither here nor there um, <laughs> all right man so we we promised we had to do some promotional work with this up some events you guys have going on uh miami of ohio basketball there's big off scrambles coming up tell a little bit about the date how it's how things are going to work um how you shoot on the golf course these days is if you want to throw that in yeah so june 15th we're having our golf outing all of our players will be there our guys are moving in june 13th before we start up our training for the for the rest of summer so we're just trying to get as many alumni and boosters and former players it's up at houston woods there on the 15th um it's gonna be a scramble which is good. I ha I have to be in a scramble. I can't just play by my play my ball the entire time. Um, that probably isn't going to be good for for my team. I'd be out there for about twelve hours if I'm playing eighteen holes, Tim. I'm not very good. I'm not either. So I can look the part, though. I can look the part. You know, I can go visor. Yeah. I can have the golf you know, the little glove on, and I can have nice little belts and and a polo. But um, yeah, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun, man. We're, we're, we're just doing it to raise money for our program as well and, and just to bring everybody together because I feel like, you know, when I got here, um, I shouldn't say there was a disconnect, but there was a little bit between our alumni and our former players and, and, our, and our current, you know, players. And, and I think, you know, Carl Richburg has been big for me in this regard with all the former players and former coaches and managers, you know, because he is a former player. He's done a great job of getting guys back but we wanted an opportunity to get everybody back on one little day to celebrate Miami basketball and what it was, where we are right now and where we're going, right? You got, I think great programs can connect the past 
the present, and the future. And that's what we're trying to do that weekend, man. Before we kick off our eight weeks of training, of boot camp for our guys, man, that's where we start to really start to uh, start to be able to, to uh, kind of form our team. Nice. And then, of course, we've got the Travis Steele basketball camps, June 26th. Talk about that and maybe the, maybe the yeah. uh, instructors you have working with you on that or – yeah, so we have we have overnight camps, and no nobody in the country is doing overnight camps anymore. Nobody. But I'll never forget. As a kid, I used to go to IU Indiana's camp, and Bob Knight was there, and uh, man, it was the, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. It was awesome. I would go every single year. Um, it was a blast. So trying to recreate though that, I think everybody's doing day camps now. So parents that are listening out there, listen, come send your son, your child to our camp. It's overnight camp is between June 23rd and June 25th. All right. We'll take care of them. No daycare needed. We got them. We'll food, everything. We'll put them in the dorm. We'll have a blast. Um, and then June 26th, we have team camp. All right. So which we're trying to get all the good teams, especially from the Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus area, even Cleveland uh, here on campus, um, which will be a lot of fun. So yeah, our, our camp season's coming up, man. So our, all of our players will be working camp. So you get a chance to to meet all of our players, and they'll be our our camp uh, our camp coaches. Excellent, Jack. You want to touch anything before we sign off? Yeah, I just wanted to corroborate. Those camps were awesome growing up. So looking forward to hear how they go. But those were some of the best memories I have from growing up. So it sounds like it'll be a blast. It's just a, it's a cool way to connect with the program, with the players and coaches, and yeah, I'll be chaperoning them up the graders and all sorts of stuff all these little kids we did that last year I, I t we had about we had a bunch of bunch of little boys man we took them all up to graders one night it, it's it's a lot of fun man they have a, they have a lot of fun we do a lot of cool things with them that's awesome man i know those are always gonna be a lot of fun uh, so trav always it's just so nice to catch up with you man i don't see you enough anymore uh yeah. so it's always a pleasure we get to chat but i know uh we are keeping a close eye on miami basketballs so i think so hopefully more people will be soon as well uh, but yeah, always, always appreciate getting to chat with you. Absolutely. We appreciate you guys, Tim and Jack and yeah, keep an eye on us. We're, we're, I think we got a chance to really take a, take a major, major step forward this year. So I'm excited. Yeah. Keep an eye for sure. I know scheduling will be coming up pretty soon. So see what's going on there, but Hey, on behalf of Jack Mueller, this is Tim Daniel from Riverfront U. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys soon.